Hey guys, Nexi here, back with another video. Today we have a new 3D printer to review. This time it's Creality and the 3. Stay tuned. Last year Creality was one of the most popular Chinese 3D printer manufacturer on the market on 2017, mostly thanks to CR10 and CR10S models, which was probably the best choice 3D printers on the market for the price range. Now in 2018, Creality managed to do it again with a new low-cost 3D printer called Ender 3. Ender 3 comes with a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 mm, which is already bigger than most other E3 machines. But it comes even better because in reality the build plate is 235 mm on X and Y axis. So I will say that you can squeeze 230 by 230 mm of the useful print area, which is great. The machine has a Bowden style extruder frame is made of aluminum extrusions and none of the 3D printer parts. Now we have just injection molded parts like power supply cover and caps and this X-top micro switch cover on the front. I like CR10 which comes around 80% pre-assembled and the 3 comes as a kit around 50% pre-installed so you need a little more time to put it together which is totally fine as you will save a lot comparing to ready to go machine. I assembly mine in around 45 minutes as I like to work slow and pay attention to all the details without the rush. Instructions was great and it was very easy to follow. Parts in this kit are nicely labeled and this is one of the nicest kit that I put together so far and as soon as I opened the package I noticed some upgrades parts in this kit. Starting for this 24 volt power supply which will give you much faster heat bed warming up time. New design lead screw coupler which looks great and this spring removable tool finally have the plastic handle. I notice also that the Ender 3 is using CR10 motherboard, if I don't mistaken, and I didn't know that this board can work on 24 volts. Well, I know now. Also, I like how all electronics is packed inside this small enclosure, and it's a part of the frame now, so we don't need that bulky noise control box no more. Just one tip, as I already mentioned a few times in my reviews, you do need to pay attention of the adjustment of these roller wheels, and if they are too loose or too tight, adjust them with the supply tools until they are moving nice and smooth. Also, I notice how this Bowden tube is longer than it should be, and when I cut it with my cutters, I noticed that the Teflon tube was more softer than it should be. This can cause potential problems in the long term, as the softer Teflon tube may pop out from the coupler at some point. I will keep my eyes on it, and if that happens, I will replace the tube as it's very cheap. For printing surface, Ender 3 is using this pad, similar to the build tech. Also, there is no glass plate or the outer level on this machine, which I would like to see, but for the price of 200 US dollars, with the shipping including, I really cannot complain. For level adjusting, Ender 3 is using this new oversized level wheels, which I do like, as it's much easier to reach them and do the fine adjustment. Only the right back one is still a bit hard to reach, as the LCD display is standing on the way. When it comes to connectivity, this machine is supporting printing over USB port or over micro SD card. For slicing software, you can use pretty much any slicer you like, and I want to point that the machine software files is available as an open source, which is great for community. And now let's talk about the print quality. My first test print on this machine was this small dog, which G code was on micro SD card. Print looks great, and there is nothing to complain about. Happy with the results of the first test print, I slice and print 3D Benji. I use Creality CR10 printing profile as a reference in Acura and it seems to work very well with the Ender 3 as well. 3D Benji looks great overall, but I noticed something right away about the Ender 3 print quality. If you look close enough on the upper side of 3D Benji on the special light angle, you can see the salmon skin artifact on the printing surface, which I don't like as this is the first of all Creality 3D printers that I have ever reviewed on my channel to have that issue. Not that I need picking, but this is 2018 and there is no space for salmon skin artifacts no more. Since I don't like salmon skin to show off my prints, I quickly installed one of the teal smoothers that I have around on X and Y axis. This upgrade is very easy and pretty much just plug and play. TL smoother goes to motherboard and the stepper drivers to TL smoother and that's it, you just need a couple of minutes to install them, it's pretty easy. After this small upgrade I print 3D Benji again using the same G-code and look at the difference. It looks much better now, no more Simon skin. It's completely gone and I highly recommend this cheap upgrade. I'll place the link in a video description where you can find these 8 diode TL smoothers. 
Since I like to print on the glass surface and it will take some time until I receive my matching glass of Ender 3, I temporarily use the smaller glass from one of my other 3D printers. For helping prints to stick well on the glass, I use a Printafix spray or this Aprinta stick. They work very well. Next, I print this rocket to quickly test the alignment on the Z axis. The print looks great, there is no sign of any layer separation or misalignment and there is no sign of salmon skin. Great results. Next, I found this awesome redesigned Predator clamps on a Thingiverse and I print them in a blue PLA. Print speed was 60 mm a second, retraction distance of 8 mm and retraction speed of 80 mm seems to work very well with this printer and it did not leave any stringing on the printing model. Clamps work great right from the printer, they are open and closed very nice without an issue. Only minor complaint is that the clamps should be designed a little more tight as they have a little more play than they should, but my guess is that not every maker has a perfect tuned 3D printer, so that was a more logical choice. Great design anyway. For my next print, I want to print something larger to see how this printer will perform in a long print. I found this model of the human heart and I printed in a real size. The print took 22 hours to complete and after I take all the supports, results was awesome. I print this model with a 0.15mm layer height to save some print time and indeed it looks very nice. Next I print this scissor sculpture which is actually the pencil holder and it looks great. A small problem with the chin support as it was created very thin and the print speed was 50 mm a second on that tiny part so the support fell over. I tried to use some black silicone glue to hold support in a place and I lowered the print speed in hope that support will not fall out. And eventually support did fall out but still the print looks great. Next I print this awesome design miniature from the Fat Dragons in 20% scale using the silver PLA. The print results are great. There are so many cool details on these models and they are looking great even if I use only 0.15 mm layer height. These miniatures are from the Dragon set and they cost 4.99 US dollars and there is a 5 of them. Links will be in video description. I also try ABS, PTG and TPU filament on this printer. I printed again these awesome clamps with the PTG filament. They had very little stringing on the finisher part thanks to the cooling fan which blows air exactly where it should and since I print them on the glass, I use the brim option to hold print better in a place. Clamps were stuck at the beginning, but after the few minutes of the cleaning, that brim support, they get loose. Overall, very nice results with the PTG. When it comes to heated bed temperatures, heat bed warms up very fast, thanks to the 24 volt spore supply. So you can start printing very quickly. Here in my test, heat bed on the Ender 3 can reach 50 degrees in just 1 minute and 7 seconds, 100 degrees in 6 minutes and 40 seconds and the maximum heat bed temperature was around 110 degrees which I confirm with my infrared meter. Those are very good results and you can print with ABS without any mods which is great. Here are my quick tests printing with ABS and TPU filaments. These are arms for mini quadcopter designed by Tetch2. Very good results, no warping with ABS and as well with a flexible filament. I have no complaints. And now let's talk about the noise. Noise level when printing is around 57 decibel, which is not too bad, as the most of the sound is coming from the cooling fans and some from the stepping waters. But that depends of course on what kind of surface your printing is. To lower vibration on Ender 3, Creality placed these rubber pads, but they are pretty thin. I was using these foam pieces to lower vibration. You can simply cut a few corners of the packaging foam and place it under every corner. They work fine, but they don't last too long as they can't really support the printer weight longer than a day or two. What you can do is simply print these vibration dampers in a PLA and place them under the corners. These dampers are made for Ender 3 and they are working very good. Just remember to print them in 100% infill and they will be pretty stiff and stable.
with the leg dampers, I was able to lower vibration from the frame to the table, but not so much vibration noise that come from the step motors, which still can be annoying to some people if you're sitting directly next to the printer. If you want to make your Ender 3 or any 3D printer almost completely silent, without too much of the hassle, there is easy solution that works brilliant and that is this. These are called the stepper motors dampers and they are designed to absorb vibration that comes from the stepper motors and stop them to not be transferred to the frame. They are made from two metal pieces with the hard rubber in between. They can be installed on almost all 3D printers that use the standard stepper motors and they should not make any difference in the print quality. They are very easy to install and since I test just two of them on my X and I axis on my CR10S, I was blow away how much noise and vibration they absorb and what difference they make. After that, I brought a full bag of the dumpers and I will install them on my all 3D printers. Here is the Ender 3 noise test with the dumpers and without. And now I want to point out the few small but very important upgrades that should be installed on every Ender 3 machine, in my opinion. First, this filament guide that will make sure that the filament don't rubber on a Z-rod, which can be oil or grease, and that also lower the angle of the filament going to the extruder. Next, you should print and install this LCD enclosure to protect LCD from shorting out or freezing if you accidentally touch it from other side. Next, you should print this case fan intake. This will save your fan from stopping if some of the filament or support pieces fall on it. And one more thing that is a very important and I have to point out as well is this. If you're planning to print with ABS on this machine, you should rewire this case cooling fan to spin all the time when the printing is on, because by default, this case fan is connected to the filament cooling fan and they are spin together at the same rate, which is fine for the most of the time. Only problem is, if you're printing ABS, you don't use cooling fan in most cases. That means that you will not have any airflow to cool down your motherboard, MOSFETs and the stepper drivers, which is not good. And you need the cooling fan, especially when you're printing ABS, because you're going to use all the current available and the motherboard heatbed MOSFET will get hot, so you need to have that fan on to cool down the components. And here is how to do it. You simply cut the fan wire and connect it to the main 12 volt input and it's done. Now your motherboard coolie fan will be on all the time and you don't need to think about it no more. Problem solved. And by this time you probably notice these three purple objects on the table. These are called sphericons and they are one of the most interesting objects that are printed. As soon as I saw the Agnes video, I got to print them. These objects look very cool and they have ability to roll on a very unusual way. You do need a slightly tilted surface to do the continuous roll, which is not too hard to find around the house. You can also change the roll direction and you can even spin them. They have a very cool design and I will link them in the video description as well. So to conclude, I think the Ender 3 will be the new most popular 3D printer under $200 in 2018. It will be very hard for competition to compete with Creality and offer something better than the Ender 3 at this price range. Days of acrylic A0 A8 and A6 are pretty much gone, which proves Ender 3 sales numbers and very high feedback rate. Alright guys, that was my review of the Ender 3. If you want to order one for yourself, I've placed the link in the video description as well with the, all the parts and models that are printed in this video review. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for the watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.